Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about. There's some great trends going on in the currency markets. All right, man. Where do we want to kick things off, Teddy? Uh, well, why don't we start with Europe and we'll work our way around the world and I'm going to explain how you can trade the divergence that's going on with the major crosses right now and actually ride these trends. So um, we'll start with Europe and uh, Euro US dollar. I'm along it. I see there's nothing but weakness going on with the EU. The same with the US dollar Swiss. I'm along that because the Swiss also is going to be under pressure. I don't see that ending for any time soon, especially what's going on with the interest rate environment. We have the Treasury bonds that in the past four weeks have dropped 15 handles, making newer move lows today. So U.S. dollar strength is definitely hurting those currencies really, really bad, especially because of the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. The pound U.S. dollar, however, that's the divergence. I'm long that one because between oil and the interest rate thing, it's not as um, heavy on that one. Plus, it, 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 because of Brexit, remember we talked about that for two years, and if anyone wanted to know what the implications of that would be, now you can see their sovereignty, how that's actually helping them. It's holding up their currency, it's helping their economy, and they're not taking the blunt of this, of everything that's going on with the Ukraine and Russia, okay? So in, in the dollar index, that's why you have a lot of it right now. It looks like it's kind of basing. You know, you have this flirting with resistance, flirting with support. That's because the euro is the biggest component. That's what's drag. That's the, where the strength is coming in in the dollar index. But then you have the pound that actually is kind of going is going the other way, obviously. So that's restricting the dollar index for, from upward movement. OK. And now we're going to bounce around to Asia and see how this is why the dollar index is becoming really hard to use as an indicator. And you really have to watch the trends of what these individual currency crosses are doing instead. OK, so U.S. dollar yen, we know we've been talking about that for a long time. I know you guys love it because of how it impacts gold. Um, that is still a bull. We talked last week about how the Bank of Japan has a 130 price target to support their currency. Um, we had a buy signal going on there a couple days back. I'm long the currency again, looking for <clears throat> new move highs. Now, this is where you can really play the divergence in the markets. So in the Asian zone, the Australian dollar is a bull. That market had bottomed out a few months ago because of the rising commodity prices and demand for them. It's really strengthening their currency. The interest rate factor is just slowing the rally for the Australian dollar. So now the great play now is the Aussie yen because the Aussie is strong versus the dollar and it's in a bull trend. The U.S. dollar yen is in a bearish trend, so that makes Aussie yen a bull, and it's flirting with new highs. I think you're, until the yen hits the U.S. dollar 130 mark, you're going to see that trend continue. It's a great rally to, um, to chase into and look, and look for newer move highs. I think that the velocity of that move is also going to give you a lot of um, reward compared to your risk, especially if you're risking the last swing lows. And the same is for the pound yen also, because since the pound is, is at least relatively stable versus the dollar and not a bear, and the, and the GN is collapsing versus the dollar, the pound yen trade is also a really good bull. So that's my little walk around the currencies, and now I'll give you the question now. <laughs> No, that's great, man. I was just letting you roll with it. And it, it is pretty amazing. Um, and it makes sense. You lay it out when you got strength on one, you got weakness on another, you pair those. And of course, it's going to accelerate things. Um, when you're looking at these pairings, Teddy, for people not familiar with Forex, because I'm not familiar, you know, I really don't trade too much Forex really at all. Um, but of course, it's important for how our markets trade. But when you're trading these, um, are you constantly looking for these types of setups where you're, you're, you're trying to find maybe the weakest uh, versus the strongest? Um, you know, as in, are you trying to look at like a pound yen or a pound um, or an Aussie yen versus kind of we're so used to it and you make the mm -hmm. great points so, you know tell me what the dollar index is doing right but it goes so much deeper than that are you trading the euro dollar you trading the pound dollar but as a forex trader do you focus on these types of pairings trying to find the weakest and, and the strongest it would make sense but it, i don't want to mm -hmm. say they're are they as liquid because i know the forex market's amazingly liquid um but what do you go through when you look at something as trading like the euro dollar which is just you know one of the marquee pairings out there mm -hmm. versus something like a, a, a aussie yen or something like that Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. And you know what? The answer is really simple. It is exactly that. I do look for the trends in the other crosses because that helps no matter what. I, you've heard me say it before that the best indicator of the market is the markets themselves because that's in real time. 
So just like how I, I laid out those trades for the yen trade, you know, with the dollar versus the pound and also the Aussie, because yes. of those trends, that's how I put myself in those other crosses. It's a triangle. So you know that where when you have one broad-based trend that you can count on, like we know that the US dollar yen is obviously in a bull market. <laughs> higher sure. move highs, higher move lows. It's been going that way for months, you know? Yeah. So, and then you know now also that for instance, like the Australian dollar, that bottom versus the dollar already months ago. So that yeah. was a bear, and no matter what, you can't say it's a bear anymore. It's because it's sure. been a bull for months. So riding those, once you have that at least intermediate and short-term trends that are confirmed, higher move highs, higher move lows, then you look for, and that's why I said we had spy signals in those currencies. So for instance, last Friday and last Thursday, you had a buy signal in the US dollar yen. So that means we're looking to go back up and check challenge resistance. We also had a buy signal in the Australian dollar so that means that's going stronger versus the dollar. So that means it would overtake the yen, you know? So it gives you, um, and then also in those crosses, you had a buy signal simultaneously. So when all three of those have signals that go off, then it's, that's, that's like the golden moment where you're like, okay, the big money has all turned when it comes to that, that quadrant. Because remember, there's other crosses, like there's Euro Swiss, there's Euro Yen, there's Euro Pound, and all these other ones have the same differences as well. So where you might see a consolidation, say in the US dollar sector in one of them, and only trending in the other, those other ones will be trending, you know? So there's sure. always some, there's always a move somewhere. There's always a bull market somewhere. There's always a bear market somewhere, you know? So that is exactly how I do look for those trades, you know, at least to get me in the f frame of mind of, am I looking to be a buyer or a seller? Which is the right side of the market to be on? No, it makes sense, because you basically got two sides of the equation in terms of a pairing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, why not have both trends on your side in sure. that pairing? Uh, back to the dollar yen real quick, Teddy, because I know okay. we got a bunch of traders out there. You gave us some great insight insight last week talking about the Bank of Japan. You referenced it again, mm -hmm. saying they're kind of drawing the line in the sand. So you're a bull. We got it at 123.86. Where do you start to get a little hesitant if you are looking for an upward move since you have the Bank of Japan over there talking about maybe mm -hmm. capping that at 130? I would say that if you're riding the long, um, you don't want to try and pick a top. That's for sure. Never try and pick a top or a bottom. I'm looking to start taking profits around 127 half to 128 half and then cool. see if it can get to 130. But I'm laying off the position because I don't see it accelerating. If it goes above 130, I see it being a radical spike where if you don't get out right away, you're gonna be all of a sudden wondering, oh, now I got stopped out and I sure. could have made you know, at least a couple of dollars off of it. You know, sure, and we got 30 mm -hmm. seconds, Teddy. We got crude trading at 101.23. Uh, what's your take on crude, where we go? I think we're gonna be chopping around between 100 and 115 for the next couple of weeks. Sounds good, man. I don't Teddy, think we're we appreciate big move yet. That's a, a great insights, man. I appreciate you Thanks. walking us around all those pairings. I know the listeners appreciate it as well. And uh, boy, everything every week, Teddy, we got a whole new market by the time I talk to you. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, man. Take care, Tommy. Have a great you day. You too, Teddy.